So just to refresh your memory, story maps are web apps that combine interactive maps, multimedia content, which includes your photos, videos, audio, etc., and user experiences to tell stories about the world. And the world can mean anything, planet-wide, nationwide, or even as small as your local neighborhood or community. And most of the story maps are hosted on the cloud by Esri, so you don't have to worry about the small nitty gritty details of maintaining servers, but you can also opt to host them yourself as well. They incorporate builder functions that enable you to build a sophisticated story with no GIS or web development skills, so you don't need to know JavaScript, HTML, CSS, etc. for you to create a sophisticated story map. And they work equally as well in personal computers, tablets, and smartphones. And that's because of the responsive technology. So anything you see on the big screen, you'll be able to see the same thing in a small screen as well. And finally, story maps are open source. So you're free to download and customize them as you wish. You can get the source code from GitHub and it's also accessible through the story maps website. So the story map I'm going to be highlighting here today is this Cascade story map created by CTV News. The Canadian victory at the Battle of Vimy Ridge in France during the First World War is widely considered a defining moment for Canada. Canadian soldiers captured most of the ridge from the Germans on day one of the attack, but the victory came at a terrible cost. To commemorate the 100th anniversary of the battle, ctvnews.ca highlights the Canadian Corps movements and accomplishments on the battlefield and gives you a 3D tour of the Vimy Memorial that stands majestically today. So the Story Map Cascade app lets you combine narrative text with maps, images, and multimedia content in an engaging full screen scrolling experience. In a Cascade story, sections containing text and inline media can be interspersed with immersive sections that fill the screen with your maps, 3D scenes, and images and videos. The Cascade is ideal for making compelling and in-depth stories that are very easy for people to navigate. So what I'm going to do next is actually recreate a couple of the sections from this story map to show you how easy it is to create a compelling story map. So before you begin building your story map, the first thing I always recommend to do is plan out your content. So what I've done here is actually created a quote unquote storyboard using PowerPoint. So for each of the sections that I'm going to be creating, I've created a separate slide just to highlight what I'm going to show in each section and then also some formatting that I want to do along the way. Now you don't necessarily have to use PowerPoint to plan out your sections. You can use whatever you feel is best to plan out your story map. The planning process always takes the longest amount of time. And once that's complete, the actual development process is going to take you no time at all. So now that my planning process is complete, let's start building our story map. There are two different ways that we can start creating story maps. The first way is accessing ArcGIS online by going to www.arcgis.com. And from here, all we have to do is click on the sign in button on the right hand corner. By clicking here, just add in your credentials and click sign in. Once you've signed in, on the top left corner, click on map to start creating a map. Once your map has been created and saved, click on the share button to access the gallery of configurable application templates to start creating your story map. The second way that you can go ahead and create a story map is by clicking on the apps at the top left hand side and then clicking on story maps to access the story maps website. The Story Maps website has an abundant amount of resources to help you create your story maps. The first place we're going to check out is here at Apps. Here on the Apps page, it provides you with more information about each of the different types of story map templates available to you. For each of the story map templates, you're able to build a story map using that template right away. You can also learn more information. You can view the gallery to see how others have used that same template to create story maps, and as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial. Now the next thing we will be looking at is the gallery, which you can access from the top left-hand corner. The gallery is a great place to get started and get inspired with story maps featured by the story maps team. Here on the left, there are various filters depending on your search criteria. You can add in one or a combination of filters. So let's look at a story map journal template within the journalism and media industry. So from here, we can see all the different types of story maps that pertain to this specific search criteria. You can search by a specific template, 
a subject, an industry, a format, an author. In addition, you can also submit your story map to be featured in the gallery. So now if I scroll back up again, the next thing we're going to look at is the blog. The Story Maps team is always active. Here at the blog, you'll be able to find various articles pertaining to Story Maps. The types of blogs here include how-tos, tips, tricks, and so on. So now that we've explored different parts of the website, let's go ahead and start creating our Story Map. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the My Story tabs here at the top of the page. This is similar to the way the My Content works with ArcGIS Online. The My Stories tab here kind of acts like a curated library of all the story maps you've created thus far. Here on the right hand side, you can click on Check Stories to check the health of each of your story maps, as well as click on Create Story to start creating your story map now. So when I click on Create Story, I'm presented with all the different templates I'm able to use to start developing my story map. If I know exactly what template I want to use, I can go ahead and click on it and start developing my story map. However, if I didn't know exactly what story map template I wanted to use, I can click on the Ask the Pros button here, which is a series of questions to help guide you to a suggested story map template. Since I already know which template I want to use, I'm going to go back to Pick an App and click on the Cascade story map template. Here the Cascade Builder appears showing your cover page with a placeholder cover photo. You can click on the text to add your own title and an optional subtitle below. So since I've already created a storyboard of exactly what I want for each of my sections, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste my title and my subtitle. So now that I've added in my title and my subtitle, I'm going to click on the Save button on the left hand side of the builder. So now that my story map is saved, I'm going to click on the Add Your Image or Video button to specify my own cover media. The media picker appears which allows you to, for example, add in a picture from your Flickr account or another account as well. You can also upload an image file from your computer directly to your Cascade. Images you upload from the disk are hosted in your Cascade application automatically. So for my story map, I have a video that I want as my background. So I'm going to click on the link to content and then paste in the source of my video and then click the check mark. And here automatically the video is added as my cover. Once that's complete, I'm going to go ahead and click on save to automatically start saving my story map. I highly recommend you save as you go. So now we can start authoring content into our story map. So before we begin, I'm just going to go over the two different types of sections that are available within the story map cascade. So the first one is the narrative section, and this contains text and inline media. So when a reader scrolls through a narrative section, it behaves much like a typical web page. The second section is called an immersive section, and this one fills the page of the media you choose. So in, in an immersive section, you can configure exactly what your readers see and how they're going to interact with it. There's already a narrative section in our story already waiting for us to add content to it. All we have to do is scroll down to see it, or we can click on the bottom arrow here of the cover page. All we have to do is click on the placeholder text block here in this section to start adding in an introduction to our story. So what I'm going to be doing here is adding in some text. I'm going to open up my PowerPoint and copy and paste the first part of text I want to add. So now that it's copied, I'm going to click on text, and I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. So the block formatting button here on the margin lets you format your paragraph as a heading, so H1 or H2, or a block quote, and also adjust the alignment of your text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click enter on this to make it a new line, go back to here and make this into an H2 header. I'm also just going to go ahead and align this all to the left. The next couple of sections here I'm also going to make into headers and also aligned to the left hand side. So to format a passage in bold, italics, underline, or strike throughs, all you have to do is highlight over the words and the options will appear. So now I'm just going to go ahead and bold the rest of my text. So now before I go any further, I'm just going to go ahead onto the left hand side again and click save. So once that's saved, 
Now I'm going to do is add in a photo. So to add in any inline media immediately after our first paragraph, all we're going to do is hover over the space here in our first paragraph and the plus button will appear. In the menu, we're going to go ahead and choose media. So now the media picker appears. From here, we can add in any images, web maps, 3D scenes, or videos. So what I'm going to do is go into my Windows Explorer and drag and drop my first image. We can click on the button on the left hand side to configure the media that we've added in. So the configurations will be dependent on what type of uh, media you've added in. So in this case, since I've added in an image, we can configure the size to be small, medium, or large. So I'm going to configure this image to be a large image. Once that's done, I'm going to click on the checkbox on the left hand side to complete my configurations. Now that that's complete, I can click on the plus button here to start adding in more text. Actually, before I start adding in more text, I'm going to go back to the left hand and click on save again. So I'm going to go back into my storyboard and add in the next piece of text. So I'm going to click on the plus sign, click on the text, and paste it in. Once from here, I can notice that my hyperlink did not transfer over. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the hyperlink button and add in my hyperlink there, which is going to be the same thing plus and it's done. I'm also going to reformat this to be a bigger size and then also align it to the left. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to add an immersive section. So this immersive section is going to have two images and as well as some accompanying text. So to begin we're just going to go ahead and hover over the last part of the paragraph and now click on immersive section. So when you author an immersive section, you define one or more views, and these views appear one after the other as your readers scroll. So each view displays the media you choose. So for this example, we're going to have the two of the same maps, but the second map is going to go ahead and highlight the areas that are talked about in the accompanying paragraph. So each of the views does come with an accompanying text that appears on the top of it. So you can go ahead and configure the width, the location, background color, and behavior of these text blocks. You can also define the transition effects between the two views, such as fades and swipes. A wide variety of different interactive behaviors and looks can be achieved using the immersive sections. So now just looking closely at my storyboard, I have the two different maps I'm going to be displaying as the two different views and it's going to slide from the first one to the second as well as this accompanying text will scroll over the second view. So for the first view I'm going to go ahead and click on the add media to start my media clicker and from here what I'm going to be doing is adding in an image once again. So I'm going to go ahead back into my Windows Explorer and drag and drop my first image. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus sign to add in my next view. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add Media button again to view my media clicker. Back into my Windows Explorer, I'll drag and drop the second view, and there we go. So now that the second view has been added, I can go back to the left-hand side of the second view and change the transition if I wish, but I'm going to keep it as the default of the fade. Back into my storyboard, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the accompanying text that's going to go with the second view. From here, I can go ahead and click on the pencil button at the top right side and go ahead and start configuring my little text block. I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner, but I'm going to leave the rest of the defaults. Once I'm happy with the way my text block configuration is, I'm going to click on the blue check mark and it's complete. I can also go ahead and click on the left side over here and configure my image further if I wish. So now my new immersive section is also complete. And just so you know, at any time, you are able to reorder the sections in your story by pressing the Organize button that you'll see here at the bottom of the Story Overview listing on the left-hand side of the builder. And while you're in the Organize mode, you can go ahead and drag your sections to reorder them. Then, all you have to do is press Done to lock in the new order. So now, according to my storyboard, I have one more narrative section I need to add in. So I'm going to go ahead and copy out that text click back into my story here and all we had to do is scroll down and then another plus sign appears we can start adding in another narrative section so once again click the plus and add in a narrative section 
I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus sign again and add in some text. Paste in the remaining uh, paragraph I want to add and then reformat this section here for more emphasis and we're done. And now I'm just going to go ahead and click save one more time. So now just as a little finishing touch we are going to go to the settings on the left hand side and staying in the logo and sharings tab. Here we are going to be changing our logo from the Esri logo to the CTV News logo. And that is because using your own logo is important as it adds authority to your story and shows people who created it. So for in this case, I do have a link to the image of the logo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the change button here. Click on the link to content and paste in the logo link. I'm going to go ahead and click check and the new logo has been updated. Next, be sure to specify a URL that your readers will be taken to when they click on your logo. So that way they can find out more information about your organization. So in this case, I will change it to ctvnews.ca and now click apply and definitely save. One great way to proofread and to review your work is by clicking on the view story button here on the left. Here you're able to see your story without the builder in front of you. So now we can go ahead and scroll to see how all the formatting looks and if there are any changes that we wish to make. Now going back to the builder, if we are happy with our story map, it's time to share it. Here on the left hand side of the builder, you are able to choose how you want to share your story. So you can share it privately, with a new organization, or to the public. Use the organization option only if you want your members of your organization to be able to view your story. The organization option is not available if you are using a free ArcGIS public account. Once you've decided how you want to share your story map, there's only one thing left to say, and that's congratulations. You officially created a story map cascade. So now if we were to go back to our My Stories page, we can see here that it's already been updated and our new story map has been added. From the My Stories page here, we're able to edit our stories, review their content, fix any issues, and also upload thumbnails for them. You can also access your Cascade story from your My Content section of your ArcGIS Online or your organization's ArcGIS portal, along with any other maps or scenes that you've created along the way to add into your story. And that's it folks. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to check the description box below for more links that I'll be adding in for more resources about story maps. Thank you.